care know about plants. The ladies that are in charge of it, they need they don't know a lot about plants. They know about boutiques and doing that kind of thing about plants. And so they were, I said to the master gardeners might be able to help this out. But they bring in plants, repot, and sell to the public. We actually went and volunteered there before and, and did a lot of potting for them.
if we want to do the resources, we can. I'll say it. It's just I wrote it out. Cal introduce you in just a second. Okay, great. <laughs> Okay, everybody here and at home, there's about four people moving in from home, so we're glad you're here on Zoom. We're going to get to hear about birds, and I'm so excited, and habitats. And I'll wait for people to so calm down here. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, you're going to talk to me? No, I'm not. <laughs> people go down. No. And so I want to introduce Janet Reidenauer. She is a silver master gardener. How long have you been a master gardener now? Uh, seven years. Seven years. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and happens to be your sister, Julie Bruner. Tell us tell us what you like to do, Julie. You guys both like to go birding a lot, don't you? Yeah, Julie is a master naturalist as well. well. I'm in the house too. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. I graduated last year in May. Awesome. Right. The Mound State Park. That's cool. awesome. So master naturalist, if you didn't hear. And anyone at home, if you have questions, make sure you can you can unmute and ask. And let us know if you can hear okay on the chat. There's someone who's still there. So I'm going to then turn it over to you guys here in just a second. Let me open, let me let someone else in. Thanks, Lays. No problem. Now I'm going to share the screen. I have those bags in I have those bags in my corner, so. Oh, okay. Thanks for remembering. Oh, yeah. I put them out in the car right away. Hold on a second. Okay. I'm having troubles, of course, with technology. Cool. Okay, Janet, whenever you're ready, you're you're good. Okay, all right. As Blaze said, I'm Janet right now. This is Julie Bringer. And um, Julie has been a, actually a birder for, I don't know, a whole lifetime. <laughs> I've been a birder since I retired about seven years. Um, and But gardening and birds, Kind of seem to go together. I think most everybody here enjoys birds and knows a lot about birds. What we're going to talk about today is what you want to plant uh, and things to encourage birds in your yard and the habitat. Um, and I want to comment too on the pictures because we um, there are some pictures that are credited people that are on Instagram. One of our um, the, the guy who leads the Greenfield Birders, I have a couple of his pictures. And then I have some people that I follow on Instagram that have beautiful pictures. And I just sent them a message and said, you mind if I use your pictures? And they were so gracious and really nice. So this particular lady um, takes care of all the gardens at Cincinnati, um, the parks along the Ohio. So she has gorgeous things and she was so nice. Um, so what we're going to talk about is what birds need to thrive in your yard. So birds are tied to the vegetation around them for food, for shelter, and for nesting. Um, and water is one of them. So this is a picture I actually took from uh, my backyard, uh, Robin going to town. Um, but they need fresh, clean water for drinking and bathing. It's really important to keep your bird baths clean. Um, a dirty bird bath can breed disease and parasites. Of course, they the Julie, bathroom in the. On your subject on the bird bath, do you recommend a uh, kind of a product when you clean it? Because now every three days we we take the hose and we massively get rid of the water, and uh, we just use hot water. But we're yeah. not, I'm not sure if any kind of soap or something is going to be a problem. 
I don't use soap. I actually just use sand, but I think there's some products, sand, just to get all the algae and stuff oh, out. Or you just can use like a wire brush. brush or something like yeah. that, too. Okay. Um, I think there's products out there, but there's nothing that I really, I just use sand and, and water. Um, so, yeah, but it's important to clean your bird baths every few days, especially in the summer. Um, yeah, when it's because hot. and mosquitoes. Yeah. Um, and they do make, um, Heaters, so you can have water all year, all year round. <laughs> they really like that sub zero temperatures. It's a nice idea to repeat the question that comes from the audience because the people at home can't hear that. Okay. So, and I'm sure they understood what the question okay. was about, how to clean. <clears throat> Just FYI. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, and this is a picture from Adam, who's our. Uh, Birder, Green Corporal's members of the Greenfield birding community. And um, this is one of his pictures. So for feeding the young, it's amazing that 96% of birds raise their young almost exclusively on caterpillars. So you have to have caterpillars in your yard if you want to have birds nest and raise their young in your yard. Joe pie weed um, is a good example of that. It's a favorite of hummingbirds and songbirds. It's a native that's very easy to grow. Um, inse insects like leaf beetles and tree hoppers thrive on Joe pie weed. It, uh, it's also a host plant for butterflies, which turns into you know, caterpillars that the birds can eat. And this is our Joe pie weed that's out in our um, pollinator garden. Um, so to get started, you want to take stock of the plants that you have, um, then create habitat layers. So trees, shrubs there, then herbaceous plants and decaying leaves, wooden soil. Uh, and birds love a brush pile, um, especially in the wintertime, but really any time for shelter. Um, and this is a, this is one of another one of Adam's pictures and that's a bohemian waxwing and they all prefer all the uh, waxwings prefer berries. Um, and this is a cedar waxwing um, on an eastern red cedar. Um, those trees provide dense shelter for birds, loggerhead shrikes, which is the shirt I got on, um, and cardinals both nest in eastern red cedars. Um, and that's what the cedar waxwing was named for was cedar trees. It's interesting that you're bringing that up about the red cedar because um, what a few years ago, four years ago, I planted a couple red cedars. Instead of the birds scattering and going near the highway, they go into the cedars now. You know, so I have a better bird population around yeah. the cedars. Yeah, they're, they're good yeah. trees. And any, anything that you will find, and there's a lot out right now. The Audubon Society was one of our resources. Um, there were several um, webinars on planting for birds. And they all mention eastern red cedars because they're so popular with so many, so many birds. Um, this is another one of Julie's pictures with a, with a robin eating. Um, so the main thing is to remember to keep your yard pesticide free. Approximately 7 million wild birds are killed each year due to homeowners use of pesticides. Mm -hmm. Uh, blue jays are master planters. They're the primary spreaders of acorns. Um, they bury them. And remember, where only about one in three is, um, they really are effective at planting a lot of oak trees and anything that has any kind of um, acorns. <clears throat> native plants, um, as we all know, we're we've been focused on planting native plants for a lot of reasons. And birds are, are among those reasons. So birds eat seed heads. This is just, this is an aster. And this is, I think one of our asters um, that I took care of before they came and lived here. So we have lots of asters here, uh, and but they do eat the seed heads of those in the fall and the winter. Native plants are better matched to the nutritional needs. So you can have the same plant not the exact same plant, but a, one variety is native and the other one is not. The native variety is always going to support uh, birds with better nutrition. Um, the Audubon Society actually has a database of bird-friendly plants, 
You can go to that, you plug in your zip code and it'll come up with a whole list of plants, trees and shrubs and, and uh, perennials and annuals as well. All the native asters are uh, really good host plants for a lot of different butterflies and moths. Um, trees are very important too. Um, red cedar, of course, tulip trees, uh, native oaks, willows, and evergreens provide cover and nesting places along with food. This lady, what I have to tell you about the pictures because this is my always my favorite part is the pictures. <laughs> yeah. This is another one lady that I follow on Instagram, and she not only has beautiful pictures, she has videos where she has bird seed, different kinds of things, and she's hold out holds out her hand and all kinds of birds, woodpeckers and nuthatches and cardinals, all just come fly into her hand and get out of her hand. It's mm -hmm. the neatest thing. That's you. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to go in about the pictures. Um, so shrubs, Ben, there are a list of uh, lots of shrubs that are native. Um, and shrub, uh, some birds don't like to nest in trees. Some birds like to nest in shrubs. So elderberries, viburnums, blackberries, raspberries, holly, they all provide protection and food for birds, as well as beauty in your landscape. Oh, that's a thrush. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a Swainson's thrush. I couldn't remember what bird it was, but that's a Swainson's thrush. Swainson? Mm -hmm. Swainson. We had to do this over the phone because actually Julie has a concussion. <laughs> she was oh, on a rake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She stepped on a rake. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. And my first thought was, I gotta take a shower because <laughs> yeah, you can't. Go I have to go to the emergency room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a sister joke, but that's a oh, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Hope you're feeling better. Good. Um, so perennials. Um, it's best to plant wide swaths of perennials in a variety of heights to attract um, birds and gives them shelter. And obviously, you can see those the layers better. This is this is the garden out here in the yeah. pollinator garden. Yeah, yeah. pollinator Excellent. garden. So, comb flowers and black-eyed susans um, attract flocks of goldfinches yeah. and house finches. Yeah, out um, here we have flocks of goldfinches that will be up in the trees and they just come. All together, and and they especially love the tall flowers, but they like black-eyed susans as well. Mm -hmm. Container gardening: if you garden in small spaces, you do not have to have a lot of acreage to attract birds. You can use container gardening. Choose annuals and perennials that have blooms that are attractive to birds. And these are, as you know, one of my favorites because we have them out here a lot. But these I found at Newfields. Uh, and they're the bright light cosmos. And they told me they're one of their favorite plants there that people love them too. But birds, um, cosmos are one of their favorites as well. And Eastern red buds, um, that's, a, that's a good, that's what it is. Rock bottom story tree. Um, but cardinals, roots-breasted grosbeaks, quail, wild turkeys, um, and a lot of other species are all attracted to the seed buds. <laughs> seed pods of uh, red buds, and it's a native plant, so. Um, seed eaters, so birds like uh, goldfinches, black-capped chickadees, eastern towhees, uh, to attract those, you wanna plant things like sunflowers, black-eyed Susans, and asters. This is another picture from Newfield, and um, we have the asters out here, but their asters, are the ones that are this tall on either side of the sunflowers. So they they get really, um, really wild out there. So we're gonna keep <laughs> ours under control here. <laughs> Zinnias are a really good um, attractor too. Are they deer resistant? Zinnias and the asters? <coughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a, this is an oriole feeder. It's just an orange half. Um, they don't typically eat bird seed. Um, they make special feeders, but that's just on like a nail, a screw that I've got. Um, orange halves and grape jelly and, and shallow containers. And she read something about they can recognize the feeders from a distance. So yeah. the color orange is what they're attracted to, or red. Um, 
Because a lot of times I'll have my Orioles like my uh, hummingbird ears because mm -hmm. they like the hummingbird nectar. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do you have more success with uh, just slicing the orange in that versus mm -hmm. the prepared orange mixture you buy like at the co ops and the uh, hardware stores? <coughs> I'm just wondering if you have an opinion about where you can buy the orange stuff and you put it in an orange theater more quickly. So Paul's asking about the orange concentrate mm -hmm. versus the orange, regular orange. <coughs> um, I've never tried the orange nectar. Um, I did have a special feeder for the Orioles and they totally ignored it. So, yeah, same here. I yeah. ignored it for two years. <coughs> yeah, I try everything. Yeah, I would just do, I just do an orange half. And I've had um, red belly woodpeckers. They look great jelly, but mine oh, always yeah. come from great jelly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I also <laughs> read that you can dilute <coughs> grape jelly and make it more of a liquid, too. Oh, yeah, yeah so, they'll eat it that, even yeah. after it rains and it's yeah. just how it goes. Yeah. Still, they, I, um, they love grape jelly. I don't know. Got nice. that information about the recognizing it from a distance from birds and bloom, and they said people wonder. And I know the first time I had uh, an Oriole in my yard, I put put the stuff out. I put my grape jelly out. I put my orange out, and boom, the next day they were there. Yeah. And it said flying around, they just notice things that are you know out of the ordinary, and so my color must be a part of that. And you you have uh, Oreo in your yard, right? Yes, I have Orioles. I have two hummingbird feeders hanging, and they have a little cup on the top on the chain, and mm -hmm. I slice the orange in two, then put a slice in it and put it around the chain, and they sit on top of the hummingbird. Okay, okay that's cool. Um, and hummingbirds, of course, we all love hummingbirds. This is another one of Julie's pictures. Um, oh. And that is vermilionaire or kufia. Is that how you say that? Yes. Okay. Um, so hummingbirds need nectar. And perennials like bee balm, columbine, cleome, all give them nectar and they're favorites of hummingbirds. And annuals like Mexican sunflowers, lantana, petunias. Mm -hmm. um, this hummingbird, as I said, is enjoying the kufia. And we, Julie and I both have had hummingbirds go right past the hummingbird feeder to feed on the flowers. Um, diversity in native and non-native flowers. Um, the more diverse your plants are, the more species of birds you'll see. Native plants are ideal, but many non-native annuals like zinnias, cosmos, marigolds, and salvias um, are loved by birds and butterflies. Um, so they're, they're supporting. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes. This is my picture. This is a little tree frog. Um, so when you when you support birds in your yard, you're supporting a lot of different wildlife. Um, and my goldfinches and chickadees also use the ant modes as their personal drinking or bird bath. So I have to always make sure there's a, a lot of water topped off because they'll be sitting out there looking at me, you know, because they don't, that way they don't have to compete at the great big bird bath with the grackles and the red wing blackbirds. So, gotcha. It's cleaner. Yeah. After the others have done taking the bath on it. Yeah. Get a little yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? I have one question. On your rose breast growth peak, is it native to this area during the summer? You're flying through now. You had one and I know Rosemary's had yeah, one too. Yeah. Can you repeat that just in case people oh, okay so Don is asking about rose breasted gross beaks if they're native uh, to our area <coughs> and they don't stay too long do they they some migrate do. through okay some might most of them some migrate ones. through but some of them I had one in July okay. last year the last two years so mm -hmm. it's nesting somewhere yeah, I have Thank six hummingbird feeders of different sizes, and what I've noticed, and I'll make, make it short so you get the audience out there here. I've noticed that if I keep them at least 10 feet away, 10, 12 feet away from their others, because you know they're territorial and they, yeah. they get mad. Oh, yeah. So I, they're, from, they're kind of completely separate from the regular traditional bird feeders, and mm -hmm. it seems to work out real well for me. Yeah, yeah. So Paul is saying that his um, he has his uh, hummingbird feeders separate from the seed. Uh, bird feeders and um, and you keep those a little bit farther apart too. I know Julie keeps like six um, hummingbird feeders, don't you? And I don't know how many 
seed feeders you have, but a bunch. Yeah, so, but I've got like two hummingbird feeders in the front, one on the side, south side of the house, and then two or three in the back, all pretty far away. But you'll still get one little male that will decide he owns everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'll fly to the front yard and, you know, <laughs> try and get people off that too. <laughs> I, I have a question about them becoming defensive up with one another. I have, I believe that they're, just, they're playing. They enjoy that controversy back and forth. Oh, okay. Because I sit there and watch them on the porch and they'll, they do it, they do it intentionally. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Rosemary yeah. is saying that her, it's a game. So it's a game with them and they're not really fighting. No. <laughs> I mean, they look pretty a while, to me. It's a game. So the game. I, I don't know if you see feeders because I have a neighbor with a cat, but I do hummingbird feeders. Mm -hmm. And if we're sitting on our um, patio, we'll get guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll also here and he's also talk to me and submit this. Mm -hmm. So we have the same hummingbirds come back every year. So once you get them, you know, be nice to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually true. They'll come back to where they hatched. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every year. I have had uh, hummingbirds when I've taken my feeder down to clean it and replace it. And they'll go to where they usually are and they'll be, you know, and they'll look at me like, okay, where is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To the window. Yeah. 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 So when I use the red cardinal flower, not the vine mm -hmm. flower, and they will avoid the feeder. And you'll see two or three of them on that. Okay. And it's called the red cardinal flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so Lynn's saying that she uses a red cardinal flower, and that is one of their very favorites. Anything that's tubular, but especially if it's red, hummingbirds I mean, love those. So, any other questions? Okay. Michelle I have a question about robins. Mm -hmm. um, they don't, I know they don't eat at my feeder. I think they eat worms and things, but where do they eat? How do they survive? Oh, in the winter time, and I've seen them when the snow's on the ground. <laughs> oh, you know this answer? Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. So Michelle's asking, how do robins survive in the winter time when they can't get to the worms? And Lace knows the answer. So I've been listening to Doug Tallamy's book, The Nature of Oaks. It's an amazing book. I only listen on audio because I don't want to read, really, to be honest. I just want to hear. <laughs> and I didn't know this, Michelle, that moth caterpillars don't go to sleep in the winter. They are a lot of them in the trees, on the limbs, just for birds like that. <laughs> That's right. So things are not asleep. They actually have a special glycerin body metabolite that they can become uh, freeze proof so that they don't bust with freezing. But that's they're there for food for the animals. I thought that was so cool. Yeah. And just tell me, it's a wonderful resource. He yes. was one of the resources um, that we use. So Birds in Bloom. Um, the Indiana Audubon Society, Doug Tallamy's got several podcasts and books. And um, also there was another one, and I don't know if anybody else did this one, a webinar, and it was how to attract backyard birds using native plants by Sharon Sorensen. So she was and, a great resource as well. And Doug Tallamy's an entomologist in the University of Delaware Extension, I believe. So he's really great. Yes, he really oh. is. And for those of you that need education hours, those they can listen to those pod, podcasts, correct? And yes, and yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey, and they're on YouTube first. as well. Check with me first, but yeah. mostly yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, wow, well, that's good. Yes. So Ohio State. There's a lot of berries too. in the woods too, so a lot of robins spawn <clears> together, <throat> and you don't see them out in your yard, but they're a lot of them stay here year round. Yeah. yeah, they're just out in the woods, and they eat berries as well mm -hmm. as bugs. Yes. yes. Yeah, I do see. Um, I I go through Fort Harrison a lot. And in the wintertime, I do see lots of robins. Mm -hmm. which I, I always thought that was odd. Where why are they still yeah. here? Yeah. So. You'll see those at Beck and Holt as well. Mm -hmm. they, there are flocks of robins yeah. there. So, Bob, did you have a question? Yeah, just a quick question. My wife is trying, always trying to attract tons of birds. And they complain because they eat the horse barns. <laughs> but she's having an issue with, she's getting lots and lots of cardinals and blue jays, but the blackbirds keep chasing them off. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about it? Blackbirds? Uh, 
So Bob is yeah, saying that the blackbirds are chasing off the cardinals and the blue jays. That could be startling as well. Oh, yes. They're terrible. They really, they're bullies. 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 they are bullies um, you know, some shelled corn or something, and it would probably draw a little bit of them away, but it probably wouldn't draw all of them. I've got a big problem with um, grackles. I've got a lot of evergreens, and they nest in, in the common grackle nests in those evergreens, so I've got a lot of grackles, but it's like once they start nesting, they're not as my, at my feeders as much. I started cleaning a fence row a week or so ago, and yeah. I turned did find, I thought, what the heck, I'll try. I took some of the limbs I've been cutting off, Threw them into a pile, and then she's throwing some feed underneath there. And it seems like that the red birds, the cardinals, and the blue jays will go underneath there, and he especially the cardinals. Yeah. And for some reason, the blackbirds or water starlings, they're not going in there after them. So I don't know. That's good. I keep a feeder across the driveway, and the starlings don't like being in competition with the other birds. And it always keeps the starlings away. They eat on the other feeder. Okay. Okay. So for you all that are listening online, um, Lynn said that she keeps a, a bird feeder separate, right? Across your driveway. Mm -hmm. And that's where the starlings go. It's probably a good 20 feet. And I find so it don't want to compete over here. Mm -hmm. So they've got that one all to themselves. All themselves. For some reason it works. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> so you might try that too, Bob. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. People love questions. Can we ask people if, at home if they have any questions? Yes. Or if you have any questions at home, you can unmute yourself and ask. Do you have a question? Diana? Yeah. Well, um, I had a goldfinch that made a nest in a viburnum, and the nest is still there. Should I just leave it there, or should I take it away? Do they nest in the same place? I know cardinals don't. Yeah, they I don't, don't, I don't know. know. Should they leave them for some so. other bird, maybe, or not? I think so. I think yeah, they, they usually can make a new one. And goldfinches so, yeah. nest a little just bit later. Do, that's just their instinct. Yeah. Yeah. As long as there's not a nag in it, if you want to. Right. It's yeah. Not yeah. Me. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hey, we have pizza left, and it is awful good next day for lunch. So please go in, take a paper plate, and take some pizza. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.